So in the last video, I looked to the true clock for clock comparison of Skylake vs Zen. So if you haven't seen that video, you really ought to watch it first to find out the system configuration and see the non-gaming benchmarks. But for those who have seen the video, I'm Hakru and this is the Ultimate Computer Scientist. So in this video, I will be looking at the gaming and graphics benchmarks. Now before we get into the benchmarks, I'd like to comment on the lack of the GPU Pi benchmarks from the last video. In the last video, I said that I couldn't do the GPU Pi tests as the benchmark wouldn't detect the Zen CPU. This is still the case and I don't really know what's the deal there. If it's a Windows issue, then I'm not going to reinstall Windows again just for the testing on my Zen system. And I'm fairly confident it's not a CPU config issue as I've checked with a 2 plus 2, 2 plus 4 and the default config for the Ryzen 7 CPU and in none of those cases was GPU Pi detecting the CPU. So GPU Pi was dropped as a benchmark. Also note that I'm currently suffering from quite the cold so you're going to have to put up with this voice for the next 12 or so minutes. Also, you will note that I'm doing two resolutions here, 720p and 600p. Also, note that all the benchmarks have a mean of three benchmark runs. The reason for the two resolutions, which are 720p and roughly 600p, are that the graphics card I'm using is an RX 480 running at 1350MHz, so I really needed to be running at the lower resolutions to find the difference between Skylake and Zen here, and 600p has almost exactly a quarter of the pixels that 1080p has, so the GPU should have no issues resolving a difference there. Anyway, let's get right into it. So the first test I'm going to do are the 720p 4-core 8-thread benchmarks. The first benchmark here is Rainbow Six Siege and the inbuilt benchmark. In the graphs, we have Zen on the top and Skylake on the bottom, with each architecture having two bars, one for the average and one for the minimum FPSs. As you can see, Skylake and Zen are tied with around a percent difference in average FPS, which is well within the run-to-run -run deltas making the two CPUs identical in those regards. Looking at the minimum FPSs shows that Skylake is actually noticeably ahead of the Zen CPU. It's around 27% ahead of the Zen CPU. And whilst both work quite nicely over 60 FPS, it's still quite the advantage that Skylake has there. Next up is CSGO, where the story is reversed, with Skylake taking the advantages and the averages, but when it comes to frame drops, both CPUs handle about the same. Skylake is just over 16% ahead in averages and 3% ahead in minimums. Looking at the Heaven Synthetic benchmark, the reason I chose this benchmark was that it naturally runs only on a single thread, therefore cannot take advantage of SMT. So if I see a change when enabling or disabling SMT, I know this is a property of the SMT and has nothing to do with the software. Anyway, as you can see, Skylake once again is ahead of Zen by a reasonable margin of just over 8%. This is at 720p. Looking at the minimums, Zen is significantly ahead of Skylake by 45%. However, Heaven is really odd with its minimums and is not unusual to come out with really low minimum FPSs. I wouldn't look too deep into the minimums and I don't believe that they are actually indicative of any real world performance. It's just interesting that Zen is so far ahead. So looking at 720p with SMT enabled, which includes hyperthreading, it's quite expected to see Skylake beating Zen out here. So let's move to 600p, still with SMT enabled, and see how things change. So starting back off with Rainbow Six Siege again, and all of a sudden, things have changed quite a bit from the previous Rainbow Six benchmark. Before, if you remember, both CPUs were tied in averages, and it was the minimums that Skylake came ahead whereas things have switched around now and look more alike CSGO's benchmark. The reason for the equal minimums here is due to the software and not the hardware, as going from 720p to 600p hasn't really had much of an impact on the minimums, whereas the averages, at least for Skylake, have risen by 12%, whereas Zen has seen a mere 3% performance uplift, so I really do think that Zen has reached its limit here. Looking at CSGO in 600p, and overall things look mostly the same as before, except that the Skylake CPU loses much of its lead. Why? It's pretty weird. The Skylake's average FPS has fallen, and I don't know why. I double checked the results, and the averages have consistently dropped by 
and the minimums consistently increased by around 33%. However, the Zen's minimums raised by 35%, meaning overall, Zen actually comes off a little better, as its averages have stayed mostly the same, as opposed to Skylake's drop. Next up is Heaven in 600p, with SMT enabled. So whereas before, Skylake was just over 7% ahead, whereas now, the Skylake CPU is 30% ahead, which is quite the improvement. The reason for the massive jump in Skylake is that Zen really reached its limit going from 207 to 211 FPS, in contrast to Skylake, which has seen a nice FPS increase from 222 to 275 FPS. That's a 24% FPS increase for Skylake by going from 720p to 600p. Now let's look at how the overall lead Skylake has with SMT enabled going from 720p to 600p has changed things. In 720p with SMT, Skylake has a lead of around 8%, whereas dropping the resolution to 600p has netted Skylake an extra 7% lead compared to Zen, bringing the Skylake CPU up to 15% ahead of Zen overall. This is quite expected, as Skylake has always fared better than Zen in the lower resolutions. So let's move on to the second half, where I disable SMT on both CPUs and run the tests again at 720p and then 600p. Heading straight into things with Rainbow Six Siege, and we can see absolutely identical performance between the averages. It looks like the game has become thoroughly core bandwidth bound, as both CPUs provide identical averages and Skylake provides just statistically significant improvements to minimums with a near 6% lead. The other reason I know this is a bandwidth bottleneck of a CPU is because in the previous tests, both CPUs were providing above 207 FPS on average, meaning this isn't a latency bottleneck. Next up is CSGO, which continues to be the oddball. This one has closed up significantly now that we're running without SMT at 720p, with Skylake being a bit under 5% ahead of Zen for the averages, and then being tied in the minimums. Like the Heaven benchmark, I don't really think that a whole lot can be gained from looking at the minimums of CSGO's benchmark, as these really low FPSs are from a section where the camera goes through a smoke grenade, which seems to just cap both architectures' performance. Now let's look at a really interesting bench. Heaven at 720p with SMT disabled. Zen repeatedly outperformed Skylake by an insignificant, yet present, 2.3% in the averages. This gain was made purely as a result of Zen's performance improvements, as with SMT enabled, the Skylake CPU's performance had barely changed, and yet Zen had seen a reliable performance increase of between 204 to 210 FPS, which is a 6 FPS variance run to run, which went up to 225 to 226 FPS with around a single FPS run to run variance. That's about a 10% performance improvement Zen got just from disabling SMT in a purely single threaded workload. This is why I chose Heaven to test this. Anyway, the end result is that Zen narrowly edges out Skylake in this test. So the grand finale. 600p with SMT disabled. Starting off with Rainbow Six, and the same as last time could be said. Both CPUs are capped at the same frame limit owing to a CPU bandwidth limitation. However, Zen's minimums have dropped significantly, only just staying above 60 FPS. Looking at CSGO now, and the exact same story as in 720p is true. With both CPUs gaining sub 5% FPS, Zen for a 4.7% from 340 to 356, and Skylake got a 3.3% improvement from 356 to 368 FPS. Also Zen was fractionally ahead of Skylake again. So all in all, nothing has much changed from 720p. Going back to heaven, and that's a wild ride. Back in 720p, the Zen CPU just edged out Skylake, whereas now, Zen is being decimated by Skylake. The reason before was that at 720p, when disabling SMT, it allowed the Zen CPU to reach the limits of the GPU, whereas Skylake were already there, so both CPUs were roughly on par. Now that the resolution has gone down to 600p, the GPU bottleneck has been lifted, allowing Skylake to well outstretch Zen. 
whereas Zen made no gains going up to 600p. So let's look at Skylake's performance relative to Zen. So this next chart is in percent, as 100% is Zen's performance. This is the mean of all of the SMT disabled 720p and 600p tests. As you can see, that at 720p, Skylake is a single percent ahead, which makes them functionally identical. Whereas at 600p, there is a statistically significant lead observed over Zen. This shows that the Skylake's core architecture really is better when it comes to high refresh gaming. The next slide compares Skylake's lead over Zen in 720p with both SMT enabled and disabled. When both CPUs have SMT enabled, on average, Skylake is 8% ahead of Zen. When SMT is disabled, that performance gap drops to a measly 1%. Looking at 600p with SMT enabled, showed by the green bar at the bottom, Skylake is on average 15% ahead of Zen clock for clock, whereas with SMT disabled, shown by the top bar, Skylake is only 7% ahead. Both of the cases shown by the last two slides shows that disabling SMT on Zen in most cases where a game can't utilise all the cores will net the Zen CPU additional performance. These are the cases like Heaven, which gained the most as it executes only on a single thread. CSGO did gain a little on Zen, however in cases where all the cores can be utilised like Rainbow Six Siege, enabling SMT is heavily advisable. On the Skylake CPU, disabling SMT didn't help or hurt in the cases where the cores weren't utilised. However, Skylake saw considerable reductions in Rainbow Six Siege. Anyway, that's all for this video. It was quite interesting seeing how performance scales when you are looking at a matched memory config and bus speed. If you found this video interesting, you might be interested in my other videos. Anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed and learned something.